In this video, I'm going to share with you a bunch of easy to implement Google Ads tips that you can use to optimize your Google Ad campaigns and enjoy much better results. So let's get started with culling underperforming elements. When you first create your Google Ad campaigns, you almost certainly have done so with multiple keywords, multiple ad groups, multiple ads, maybe multiple ad extensions. It's rare, some people do, they just one keyword, one ad, etc. but most people don't, don't operate that way. And if you have got multiple of anything, which is what I would recommend, you want to be assessing the performance of those individual elements and you want to be turning off the elements that aren't performing as well. So let's take a look at this campaign as an example. Um, here we've got five different ad groups. Now we can look at the data, see how they performed and decide that ad group is not performing as well as these others. Let's pause those. Obviously you could do the same thing as I said at the keyword or the ad level. Here, for example, we may decide that this um, ad group at the bottom with a average CPC of just over two pounds, the others being either slightly or a little bit uh, more significantly less than that, and a cost per conversion that's up on the more expensive side in comparison to some of these other um, ad groups, we could decide to go ahead and turn that off. Now, of course, a lot of people will say, well, why do we need to do that, particularly at say the ad level, for example, if that's where the majority of the results are coming from, then Google's gonna spend more money on those, what's the point in turning them off? I see that sort of comment pop up every now and then. And you want to turn them off because it will still help improve performance, but you also want to create space, and this is my second tip, um, to add in new elements to test against the best previous performance. So let's say, for example, we had five different ads that we were running, and two of them did reasonably well, the other three didn't do so well. Great, we want to pause the three underperformers, and then we want to create three new ads, introduce them in alongside the two previous ones, and see how they perform. And you want to rinse and repeat, you want to do that um, repeatedly, and you can significantly improve your results over time by doing so, because you may well find that once you've tested 30 different ads, one or two of those produces way better results than anything you had at the beginning. And I said, you don't just have to do that with ads. You can even do it at whole ad groups, ad group level, like I've just done, uh, demonstrated here. You could do this with keywords. You could do this with extensions, provided you create enough. Wherever you've got multiple um, of a single element, you want to be focusing in on the best performing elements and adding new ones in, testing, testing, testing. Top tip, makes a big difference. Now, how often you need to do that, do you need to cull underperforming elements and then introduce new ones in, will completely depend on the volume that you're generating. You know, with really high volumes, so you're generating tons of clicks, tons of conversions, um, we might be able to do this once a week. With a ad account that's producing less volume, less clicks, it might be more like once a month, and there's obviously variation between that. There's examples where you wanna do it more often than once a week, less often than once a month, but you get the idea. It's really dependent on volume. There's no sort of set time frame. Okay, and tip number three when it comes to optimizing your Google Ad campaigns is to regularly check your search terms report and use the information in here to make adjustments to your campaigns, to your keywords in particular. So with the search terms report, you can see all the searches that caused your ads to be shown. You can see people um, clicked on those ads, how much that cost, did they go on to convert if you have all that set up, etc., etc. et cetera. Um, so this example here, I'm an example ad account, and these other campaign is for an interior design company advertising their interior design services. And the search terms are just, um, done in alphabetical order. And we can see here that the top one here is 10 best interior designers in the world. Now, is that a search that we want an ad for this company to appear for? Not really. It's unlikely that someone's searching for that because they want to hire one of the 10 best interior designers in the world. They're probably looking for an article talking about them. Perhaps the person looking is, um, an, interior, is an interior designer themselves or interested in the industry. That's a waste of money. This person did go on to click, it cost £2.25, that's a waste. So we could find that and we could look to add that in potentially as a negative keyword. You could just tick this and click add as a negative keyword. Often you would want to take a part of it and add as a negative keyword so that similar searches um, don't trigger your ads to be shown in the future. Things like in the world. In the world. In the world. In the world. Is anyone searching for something that includes in the world going to actually be looking for a specific interior design company to hire. I think that's unlikely. We could add that in as a negative keyword. And I've published a video about how to create negative keyword lists. It goes into more detail around that. You can just find that on my, on my YouTube channel. But yes, this list is very useful for adding negative keywords. You can also sometimes use it to find ideas, to add keywords in that you may want to target. You think, oh, okay, that came up. Maybe it came up on a broad match. We think, okay, that there's an angle there. We could create a whole separate ad group, something like that. Very, very useful data to come in and use the search time support. How often do you want to do this? Again, will depend on volume for uh, accounts where generating quite a lot of um, search volume, we're, we're going to be checking this 
every day or most days at least. Obviously with those with less volume, that time frame can be extended. But we're gonna be doing this significantly more than culling underperforming elements and adding in new ones to test against those. This is something you can do pretty regularly and can make a big difference over time as you really build up those negative keyword lists. You really um, optimize your keywords and what searches are actually causing your ads to be shown. Tip number four is to avoid wasting space in your Google ads in the ads themselves. Obviously there's limited space when it comes to the headline, when it comes to the description lines. You don't want to waste space with words that people just automatically filter out. There are so many words now that are so overused in Google ad copy that when people see them, they just go right over the head. It just don't mean anything. Things like award winning. Seems like just about every business is award winning. High quality. What does that even really mean? Um, guarantee in some industries, but not others is another one of these words. And there's going to be industry specific ones. If you take a look, if you do some searching around your um, service, your products, and see what your competitors are using in terms of their Google ads, what are the words that just completely throw away that all of them are using? You want to avoid those. Try and find a way to stand out. Put more emphasis on the value your prospects are going to get if they do decide to hire you, to buy from you, etc. cetera. Um, that's a big difference. It's, it's an easy mistake to make, but can make a big difference to your results. And tip number five when it comes to optimizing your Google ad campaigns is to break keywords out into separate ad groups. And by doing so, increase the specificity within your ad account. Now, you probably have ad groups. Ad groups have keyword groupings around a central theme. Let's say you have three main services. You might have three ad groups, right? One for each service. But perhaps within each service, there's four subcategories. Well, you could, instead of having three ad groups, one for each main service, you could create an ad group at the lower level and have 12, you know, three times four makes 12. And that extra specificity can really help. It allows you to create ads that are then more targeted to those specific keywords. And you can even go one step further and create unique landing pages for each one of those 12 subcategories instead of having just the three. And that can really make a big difference if people are searching around for, in this case, we've used a service, you could do the same thing with products and get more granular. Um, and they find something that's really exactly what they're after, that's very specific, that's likely to encourage the click, that's likely to then go on to encourage a conversion. So just have a think about how your ad groups are positioned and are they relatively high level? I'll give you the example of three different services. Could you go more specific? Could you go, okay, well, we've got that ad group there. That's kind of got three different concepts in it. Could we break those out into three different ad groups? Give that a go. You might see an improvement in results. Google Ads tip number six is to use more precise keyword match types. This can be really important. It's along the same lines as the previous tip where we're getting more specific, more detailed with a Google Ad campaign, and that can really help. Um, but I'm in a Google Keyword Planner just to demonstrate this, and we're continuing the same example where we're using an interior design company. I popped in the search term interior designers. Now, let's say we wanted to add this to our campaign. We select it, we, we can add into new ad group, et cetera, et cetera. But what you'll see is the default keyword match type is broad match. And that's not something that many Google advertisers really want to use. They would be better off using phrase match or exact match. Broad match is going to give you the widest uh, amount of search volume, including potentially a lot of searches that just aren't very relevant. The people, the people that search for those things aren't gonna click, or if they do click, they waste your budget, they don't go on to convert. So if you are using broad match mainly, try using a combination of phrase and exact match. Again, I've published a video on keyword match types, how they work and the details around that. So if you're interested in finding out more, go ahead and check that out. And then tip number seven is to try automated bidding if you haven't done so already. So the way you do that is from within your, your campaign, your Google Ad account, come to settings, scroll down to bidding, that's exactly where I am here. And then you may see, depending on how you set things up, something that looks quite similar to this. What you want to focus on, clicks, allowing setting a maximum CPC bid limit. Um, that's quite a traditional way of doing things, the old school way of doing things. A lot of Google advertisers still use this. They have their campaign optimizing for clicks, get as many clicks as possible with a maximum CPC uh, bid limit. But if you do have conversion set up and you are able to select for conversions and then not add, it, add in a target cost per action, that's effectively automated bidding. You're allowing Google to Put, perhaps spend a little bit more money to put your ads in front of people that they've worked out are more likely to go on to convert. You need to have conversion tracking set up and all that sort of thing to do this. But if you haven't done this and you have got conversion tracking set up or you can go ahead and get conversion tracking set up, well worth a test, might really improve the performance of your campaigns 
The more conversion volume you generate, the better this feature performs, but worth testing. But if you're looking for a quick and easy way to get better results from your Google Ads, writing better ad headlines is certainly a way to do that. I show you exactly how to write better ad headlines in this video here. It's not very long, well worth checking out.